We all know the saying, a picture says a thousand words. But what if the picture is a thousand times bigger than a regular photo? All over Canada, towns have been painting murals and building walls to preserve the history for future generations to come and to attract more tourists. I'm here in Essex inquiring about the history behind the murals and how they're helping the town to develop. For a community with tw uh, just under 20,000 people, to have 13 murals in the program is quite an accomplishment. Uh, our mural committee is very proud of our mural program. And our mural committee is looking to the future and how we can use our murals uh, for other opportunities. Uh, murals are great to, uh, for the town. Uh, it brings visitors to the area. But we need something to keep bringing the people back to our community year after year. So the way we see it, the mural committee we see it, is that we're going to use uh, other opportunities to bring visitors back uh, to our area by the use of the murals. Uh, one of it uh, we're looking at is a, an outdoor festival, which would incorporate a mural festival and bring artists from all over the world to our area to compete in a one-week uh, one week festival uh, where the winning mural would be incorporated into our program. Arthur Raines, the 1901, 02, and 06 mayor and store owner, not only did a lot for the town, he was also known to give penny candies to the children of the mothers buying food from baskets and bins. The fact that he made sure that the special sidewalks and street finishes were there to keep the dust down, it was a, a, an unusual thing in those days to have that kind of finish on streets of small towns. This shows the changes from the first CIBC bank in Essex to what it is today. In 1885, the employees helped citizens build a strong and healthy community. I think the fact that it showed that little shanty where the uh, watchman had to stay at night and he had to be alert every time the train went through for fear there were some uh, transients on it that might attempt to get into that little shanty. On July 15, 1927, the Essex Scottish Regiment was formed to fight for Canada in the Second World War. By their actions, they gave the people of Holland their liberation from the tyranny they suffered. At the end of the war, the Essex Scottish Regiment has suffered more than 550 deaths and have been inflicted with the highest number of casualties of any unit in the Canadian Army. It was the fact that there were so many of our men from Essex that were in the Essex Scottish that was the truth that drove the Nazis out of their occupation of Holland, under which they had been for, I think, about four years. Also, we have a strong Dutch community here, and uh, they wanted to express their appreciation in that manner. In 1887, the railway station was built, and because of its uses, it transformed Essex to town status. In 1907, a carload of explosive materials exploded, killing two people and damaging the town. That brought Essex into existence when the rails of the train were thrown across the muddy Talbot Trail that ran from Leamington to Windsor. That was a, a focal point for shipping, for passenger service, and that meant that Essex very quickly sprang into existence as a thriving town. The explosives were in a boxcar being switched to the Amherstburg train. Just as the train came together, the contents of one exploded probably ignited from a spark on the track. The two young trainmen from Amherstburg were blown asunder, and the burned torso of Joseph McNary was found in a crater under the train car. The crater was 20 feet across and 12, 10 to 12 feet deep. In the late 1800s, the farming industry became a major part of Essex. Throughout the years, Essex County's farmers have become leaders in dairy, pork production, and grain, fruit, and vegetable growing. This mural honors that. A merchant once told me that when the farmers had a bad year, they had a bad year. A town in the middle of an agricultural area is definitely affected by it. And that mural also tells us that we had the first agricultural office in Ontario in our town. Before, Essex used to be surrounded by forestry. And when the train station came to Essex, there was a lot of trees in the way. In 1882, James Naylor established a lumber mill, and from the trees he removed, he built agriculture tools and helped shape the landscape to what it is today. 
On July 21st, 1896, the town of Essex placed toll gates at the edges of town. Residents objected, and five men went and burned them down. After that day, no toll gate was ever built again. Apparently, the police didn't come until the next day to investigate why they had been... And even though they went to individual homes and talked to individual people, nobody knew anything about it. And if they did know that it had happened, they said it must have been caused by lightning. The rest of the murals may not show important times in history, but they do tell the story of important groups, organization, and people the town is proud of, such as when the new town was established on January 1st, 1999, because on that day, four communities united to form the new town. This mural honors the leaders of each community. The 70 years of service the Essex Rotary Club provided towards helping the community. The longest continuous community-operated band in Canada, which is known as the Kingsville Essex Associated Band, the sports achievements, and the athletes who have achieved them in Essex, and a mural dedicated to the Cub Scout Jeff McMurrin and the other leaders. The murals are actually property of the town. Uh, we've been looking at uh, installing murals on panels so that if there is a renovation done on a local business, then we're able to remove the mural from the building and then the renovation is completed, then we'll put the mural back on. Uh, but if the mural is painted on the side of the building, uh, even though the mural is property of the town, the building owner does have the right to renovate their building. And uh, with that, there is an opportunity that uh, we may have to repaint the mural afterwards. Uh, but it is uh, up to the mural committee which way we'd like to go. Originally, there were 16 murals in Essex, but over time, three were destroyed. But now there's talks on painting a new 3D mural on the four large silos in the middle of town. No matter how it is done, history needs to be told because it is what happened in the past that makes us who we are today. From the Essex Free Press, I'm Carlo Porley.